Hello, my name is Jeffrey Sugiyama, and I'm partnering with Aaron Olson, who is editing this video to show how to use and understand the Process Heater Simulator Lab. So the first thing you want to do is go into your D2L website and look under My Courses after signing in and look for the experimental methods. From there, you're going to go to your contents page, and underneath the modules, there should be a section called Labs. And underneath labs you'll have the process heater simulator. From there a window should pop up for an Excel file which I already have open so I'm just going to close this window and open up the Excel file. There we go. Now in the Excel file you'll have about six tabs with teams one to four and depending on which team you are on you'll have slightly different tests but the method should be the same for all of them. In fact it is the same. So going back to the instructions there will be a URL link and an email address and password all on the same tab. What you're going to do is basically just click on that link and it should open up the link right up here. There we go. And since I've already signed in using the email and password, it gives you this window right after that to which you're just going to agree. And it should give you this, the process heater simulator window. Now I know it looks like a lot of stuff's going on here but we're going to go through each part and once we're done you should understand everything. So going to team one what you're going to do is basically select everything from the column and put it into the input side of that process simulator here. So first thing you're going to notice is that CH4 is the only one out of all of the gases and fuels so we're going to go back and check it and CH4 is already at 100% so no change there. Next is the mode that we're going to be using, which is constant HR, which is already set to. Now it might be set to fuel pressure when you first go in, so make sure it's set to constant HR. Next is the combined air temperature and relative humidity, which is 59 and 100, so let's go check that real fast. 59 and 100, there we go. So the next thing you're going to notice are these target values and weight they're going to be is what you're looking to get as close to as possible when plugging in all this input data. So the XSO2 and draft are explained in the instructions. The target XSO2 is named oxygen O2 at stack in the output of the process heater simulator and it's right here and its value is just to the right of it at 8.81 so as you can tell it's way off from the value that we'll need which is 3 right here next thing is the draft which is described as value at the top of the radiant section on the far right second from the bottom and fourth from the top so what we're gonna do is go into here and one two one two three four second from the bottom fourth from the top and this is the value that we're gonna be using for our draft and as you can see it's way off from what we're actually looking for which is negative 0.05 After figuring out where these two values are at in the simulator, we now know what we're looking for as we go through each value. So what we're going to change now is the burner damper and the furnace damper, which is on the bottom left as I'm highlighting here. So in the instructions, it explains how the, to adjust them, but really more importantly, what they exactly adjust. So the adjust the burner damper is the XSO2 and the furnace damper is the draft. After you figure out which values you believe are closest to the target values, you're going to plug them into the burner damper and furnace damper on the far right. So the first thing we're going to do is just kind of cut these values in half since they're already at 100 and see what we get. So 50 and 50. We'll just let that load. All right, so now our oxygen at stack is about half of what we had before, now at 4.26 but our draft is actually increased. So what we want to do is really change these to get closer to the values that we want. So let's try cutting the furnace damper in half again. So 15, 25. All right, so now our oxygen is actually lower than what we expected. And the draft is actually getting closer. It's not 0.2 anymore, but 0.08, which is pretty close to our 0.05 that we want but I still think we can get closer. So let's try changing 25 to 26 to kind of get the oxygen up. 
So now it's at 2.12, but it's still pretty far off compared to the 3 value that we want. But at the same time, our draft is also increased. It's getting further from that 0 0.05 that we want. So what we're going to try to do now is actually change the burner damper, since the furnace damper can't really be changed anymore. So let's try 53. So 2.78 for the oxygen excess, and that's, that's pretty close to our 3. And our draft is actually decreased just slightly to 0 0.08, which is pretty good. But let's try a little bit further. So 56 this time. And we've overshot it again the other way, now at 3.16. And our f draft value is now 0 0.067, so we're getting pretty close. Let's try lowering it to 55. So our new value is 3.18, which is pretty close to our 3, and 0 0.07. Since I believe that's pretty close, and I'm not really going to try any harder than that, we're going to just leave those values as they are, and just take them as our resulted values. So now going back to the Excel file, we're going to use these values and input them on our output side. So it's 55 and 26. So the burner damper and furnace damper would be 55 and 26, and then the actual excess and actual draft would go there. Now I already have one finished from earlier when we finished all of the uh, lab, and what my team chose was actually 56 and 25, the other way around. And their values are actually a lot closer than mine are, at 3.15 on the actual excess, and negative 0.056 on the actual draft, which is pretty good. So let's just go double check that in the simulator real fast. So 56 and 25. And yep, as it showed on the Excel file, the values are extremely close, a lot better than mine. Now, it doesn't really matter how close they are, as long as you can get them as close as what you think is possible. My values would have been perfectly fine as well, but as, as they look, the 56 and 25 are actually much closer, so it's more accurate. So the next thing you want to do is check the um, outputs of NOx, which are right here. The values are right here, but you don't want to use this first one, you want to use the second one as shown. The next thing you want to check is the flame temperature, which you can just copy and paste back to the Excel file, and it's right here. The next thing you want to do is plug in some comments to explain why you think this would be used or what it's working as it is. So for the case of the first one, we just put the cases used over and over because it's a regular case used in uh, combustion processes. And you basically want to do this for each of the columns going through. And I believe there's about 35 values or tests for each one. So you're going to be doing this for a while. But as quick as it is for this one, it shouldn't take more than probably half hour for all the values. So the next thing you want to do is check this last tab called plots. And what you're going to do is taking these plots, you're going to use the data that you found to graph out a um, value. So to show you how the plots work, we're just going to select this and right click and find the select data. And it'll basically show which data parts they're using. So you can see that we're plotting H2 against the NOx here. And that'll make a nice graph as shown. But in the next one, we have the flame temperature using versus H2, same thing as before. So right click, select the data and cancel. As you can see right here, we have H2. Now, instead of comparing it with NOx, we have it comparing to flame temperature. And we're going to keep going through these a few more. So say the NOx versus combustion air temperature now. So let's go back there to plot 3. Right click, select data, and cancel. And so we have it combined air and NOx. Now, you notice that this one is actually in the second um, testing chambers, so 2.1 to 2.6. The reason we use that is because if we were to use like 1.1 to 1.6, all the values for combined air would be the same, whereas 2.1 to 2.6 has combined air temperature from 59 all the way to about 2000. So what you want to do is try to find the most change in 
in a value and then use that to plot your data. So for the first two cases, say the uh, H2 compared to NOx and flame temperature, we wouldn't use 2.1 to 2.6 because all those values are zero. We would try to use 1.1 to 1.6 instead. So going through each one of these, what you want to try to find is the, where the change happens the most and then plot those in your graphs. The other thing I want to mention is that it's probably best to have a fairly good internet connection because every time you calculate, as you can see up here, it'll have to refresh the page to give you those values. I wouldn't suggest doing this in the dorms at, say, when everyone's in there because these values could take a long time to get, especially if you're running at a very slow speed. The other thing I'd like to mention, other than all these plots and values, is the fact that some of these tests may actually get you no answers, kind of like an undefined when you plug in something divided by zero on your calculator. And so what you want to do is not worry about it or anything because it's actually mentioned in the instructions that some of these cases may not be definable. And you just have to mention that in the results. So I'm going to show an example of that, say, in this one, where the CH4 and N2 are 50 a piece for the percentage. And the other important thing that I'm going to show is that you need to actually plug in each value um, at the same time not separately. So in this case, you see me plug in 50 and it immediately goes to 100. It's because the calculation finished before I was able to plug in 50 on the other side, so it actually took the average of both, since it always has to be 100%. So if you notice, when CH4 was 100%, I plugged 50% in the N2 and it averaged them out, so it was 66.6 .6 and 33.4 or so. like. So, uh, as you're going to see here, as I keep plugging values in, it keeps averaging them out every time I do that until I finally figured out that you have to actually plug in 50 for both at the same time and then calculate so that it's both 100%. If it's not done that way, it will actually average them out for you and always be 100%. There we go. And the burner damper and furnace damper, no matter what I plug in, it'll always give me this error at the very top, which is saying furnace simulator is basically can't be found because the fuel pressure has to be between 1 and 50. And no matter what we do, it'll never be there. So we just take that error and copy it into our comments and just make it look a little nicer and leave all the values at zero because no values can be really found.